What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Serie A career mode. Oh man, I'm gonna bottle it. It's episode number 20. Uh, today uh, I'm gonna play about 10, 8 to 10 games I'd say of the remaining 13 in the Serie A. Right now we're 8 behind into Milan. We're not thinking about it. We're 3 clear of Fiorentina in 4th right now and most crucially... We're 13 clear of Sassuolo in 8th. I feel confident top 7 is definitely going to be ours. But the question is, can we hang on to top 4? Just slipped up at home to Palermo in the bottom 3 in the last game. So not overly common today. Yeah, I, I, I'd say around 8 to 10 of our remaining 13 games. So would that be in the case? There it's lows to get through. Let's dive right into it. Our first game, Cremonese away from home. Aiming to return to winning ways here again. Right now, 3 clear in the top four and taken on the side rock bottom of the table. Let's put it plainly on the back of the draw against Palermo. If we can't win this one, yeah, I'm certainly gonna feel as though bottling this is their definite possibility. First game, Kremlin SA away. Falls through the The nerves definitely starting to uh, to get to me a little bit. And we only just scraped through Spezia and oh man, worst possible start. We've been quite lucky with the injuries throughout the course of the save, let alone the season, but Oscar Dorley takes an early knock. Um, yeah, scraped through against Spezia, had to get a late leveler against Palermo. It's, um, it's pressure, and it definitely does affect the young teams quite a lot. Approaching half an hour mark, still tired at 0-0, I haven't really been able to get anything going here. Cremonese, bottom of the table, and again, if we can't win these sort of games, whether they're away or home, a chance of uh, staying in the top four is going to look incredibly unlikely. Profundi, Luca, onside. Go on, son. Italian Peter Crouch, that's what we've called him. And he's just belted one in. Luca puts us in front. Oh, what a touch. What a Oh, just been done in there. And the step over and the shot. And Gashi with the save. Keeps us still leading by one. Just got completely murked there. But well, as things stand, holding on to a one-goal lead. And again, if we've, got, if we've got to grind out one-goal wins, I said this in the last episode, grind out one-goal victories to the Champions League. Well, I say this oftentimes. No one really remembers how you got there. They just know that you did. If we, Oh, my goodness. If we've got to do that for the rest of the season, so be it. The nerves are really starting to show here. So one hill do me in every single game. Come on, come on, come on. Don't throw us away. William Jose for the guy. You come, gash out. You come, you come. Great, brave goalkeeping from the teenager. It's a bit embarrassing having to grind out a one-goal victory against a side bottom of the table with only two wins all season long. But hey, I haven't called this the toughest FC I've ever played for nothing. And I'd also say this too, regardless of what some people will tell you, it ain't the journey, it's the destination. No one remembers the travel, they remember getting there. And Udinese, as things stand, are there. One down, 12 to go. As for the Dorley injury, it was just a bruise, thankfully, so it'll be okay for the uh, following games. Once again, Kiwami uh, disappointed with a lack of game time. And again, at the moment, it's difficult, man, because at the end of the day, like I, I get it, I put him on crucial, but Lorenzo Luca, 12 goals in 22, plus the eight assists as well. Christian right now having to settle for a bench role in this team, and that's why I think it'll probably be a one and done for our Ivorian number nine. Right, following game. Can we make it back-to-back -back wins? Massive game too. Lacto, who we're 10 points clear of in the table right now. And if we do want to be a top five team, that guarantees Europa League, let alone Conference League team. These are the games we could really do with winning. We always have a tough game against these guys. Lazio at home. I love philosophical quotes and you know things like sound bites that you remind yourself when you're really going for it. But that is one of the few which I've heard people say so many times, and I just I just can't agree with it. I really can't. It's not a destination. It's a journey. You know. I don't. I know. Like not for me. Maybe for some people, but but not for me. I don't. I don't want to remember the journey. You know. Put it this way: when you go on like a, a long flight. To a, uh, to a nice seaside resort. Um, I don't remember the 10-hour flight. I, I, I'm just glad to be sat on the beach, you know? Oh, Luca, great save by Providell. And it's the same when it comes down to, like, working hard towards something. Don't get me wrong. Actually, Jimmy Carr put a great spin on this. Uh, Jimmy Carr, the comedian, British comedian, he, he, he did a great spin on this. It, it's not the just, uh, journey or the destination. It's the person you become along the journey. That I do kind of agree with. Um... But put it this way, I don't, you know, the road to success requires an awful lot of sacrifice, struggle, 
um, you know, and, and, and quite frankly, unpleasant things. I don't, I don't want to remember that. I just, I just want the success. It's Festi, Ebosele, it's the crossbar, and Lazio escape. I'm not, I'm not going to remember the tough moments, but I will remember the feeling when I achieve my goal. As things stand, still tied at 0-0, we're not going to achieve the goal if we keep on slipping up. Yeah, Jimmy Carr recently was on the diary of the CEO, and I know a lot of people don't like Stephen Bartlett, but I like him as a host. I think he's a good bloke. He's done very well for himself, obviously, coming from a, a really tough background, and um, I like him personally. But um, yeah, he, he, he had a great spin on that quote, which was, was, again, I think I alluded to it a moment ago there. Oh! It's not the journey or the destination, it's the person you become on the journey. I do kind of like that as a different kind of spin on it, if you will. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, there's certain parts I just don't agree with. For example, he talks about how like, you know, if you take someone who was sort of like born into money, inherited loads of money, you're going to see someone that's mentally tortured. And I'm like, well, <laughs> put it this way, there might be a little bit of truth to what you're saying, but ultimately, oh, it's profundly is denied. If someone was to offer me an inheritance of like half a million, sod being mentally tortured, I'd take it every day of the week, Jimmy. I, w I wouldn't mind the fact that I've inherited it and not truly earned it. I'd take it every day of the week, mate. Certainly over this, that's for sure. As Gashi finds Luca, and still we find ourselves tied. As Gashi is denied, still nil nil. It's coming, it's coming, and how often do I say this when... <sighs> when you are on top, just believe if you've done all the right things and you keep on pushing, you will push through. <sighs> Come on, Georgi with the late opener. Udinese leave it late, but surely get what they deserve. Ten on the clock. I think we're going to see this out. Massive three points at the Blue Energy Stadium, but again, totally deserve. When you do all the right things, man, just be persistent. Eventually, it's going to pay off. And for Jerji as well, what a debut season he has had for us, man. Seriously, even though we have phased him back to CM. Again, like he, he, he still gets involved. He still gets involved, and the stats back that up as well. Up three ratings, 10 goals in 19, and the four assists as well. Again, I do want to improve the strength and the stamina too if he is to remain as a CM and not a CAM. But, oh, big moment there coming up with the game winner. Right, so uh, before the following game away against Dempley, that needs to be a bank. We've now gone seven clear. Can we keep the gap as it is? Three more scouting updates. I still can't believe I haven't put someone in the academy yet. But again, because we're now three seasons in, I really want to be as selective as possible. There is, to be fair, a couple of really good players here, uh, including Mauro Bianchi, a six foot six that I'm quite keen on. But uh, again, I, I, want it, I want to keep on scouting for as long as possible before someone makes the academy. I mean, I've got to put someone in, surely, right? I mean, no one has made the academy yet. Um, to be fair, I do quite like the look of Cyprian Komen, to be fair, 80 or 91 potential, and on that right-hand side as well, the defensive stats don't look too bad as a base to begin with, along with what looks to be good stamina and strength, which fits our system quite well, to be fair, so I'll give him the first scholarship of the, uh, of the year from Romania. Oh, and it could be someone very good here, Patrick Moser. Not too sure how we look after him a month, but already the dribbling looks fantastic at just 15 years old. Uh, I think I'll give Leandro Schneider a, uh, a scholarship from Switzerland, just because I, I always like to sign at least one player from each nation I scout, and we'll uh, continue to scouting on these three players for the next couple of months before the mission comes to an end. So three players now in the academy, and to be fair... Yeah, that Swiss winger looks very, very good indeed. The problem is, though, I said before, they, they don't really fit our system, you know, when they're, uh, they're wingers with poor uh, defensive stats. Because in our system, again, a 3-5-2, we need players that can also operate on the defensive end as well. Right, uh, yeah, following game, Empoli away, heading into this one, going for what would be our third straight win and staying in the top four. We've got a seven-point gap now, so a two-game swing between us and Juve. And again, we're guaranteed to finish with a better head-to-head -head record than the old lady as well. Big boost there, but got to keep on winning. 11 games to go. Let's get another big three points, and once again, I'll take a grind out. 1-0 victory. Forza Udinese. 
Still no nil. Half an hour in. As Jacker dispossesses and by a former hero to a possible future one now. With Luca dinking it. Buffundi presses there. Oh, as he fires wide. 33 minutes in, still nil nil. And you know, the elephant in the room is that technically, by definition, we are in a title race. Only six points behind Inter Milan, but yeah, I'm not really thinking about it too much. Most important thing is just keep on getting those wins. Input, not output. Luca, Pras, Keita, Dawley, Luca the dummy runner, Buffini, keep going Oscar, and it's left for Oscar, Dawley, oh, what a goal, Oscar Dawley, top corner, he's had a really good debut here for us, I'm still on the side long term with I play him CMC, DM or LM, but from the left, with the left, top bins, 1-0. The uh, talk around Italy right now is, are Udinese serious title contenders? Well, I would say if we can win this, three straight, unbeaten run getting extended two, and the gap remaining at six with ten to go, I, I think you've got, you've got to give us a, you know, a chance. I'm not saying you've got to put us as a wonderful build-up. Gone! Lost my train of thought, but Simone Profundi gives us a second and surely the win. Yeah, I'm not going to say we're favourites, absolutely not, but we're definitely in this. Not going anywhere, guys. We are staying in this race. But most important thing, take in stages. Like I said, man, know where you are. And where we are right now is fourth. Nine clear of Juve and Fiorentina. Ten to go. Win seven of those nine. And top four is ours. Easier said than done, though, of course. There's so many big games to come, including this one. Following Clash, back in Udine. Atalanta right now just above us by two. Win, and we leapfrog them and go into third. But lose, and Juve and Fiorentina will surely cut the gap. Big clash here for Udinese. Christensen to Eguacele. Pratty. Ooh, Pratty. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Keep holding, there we go, there we go, there we go. Don't need to force it, like, if it's not there, don't force it. That was a mantra we used to repeat. Oh, in the uh, in the first couple of seasons of the Luton Town career mode, way back in the start of that season. If it's not there, don't force it. Just keep holding the ball and wait for a better opportunity. It's Profundi's delivery towards Xhaka is headed away. And he'll get another go. Xhaka remains in the box, and again, he's asking for it and heads it off target. Oh man, the cheat the cheat code has been nerfed. I hate to say it, but it's 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 been nerfed. He was absolutely unstoppable from corners last year, scoring ten. This year, just a one. Probably gonna finish up with just a one as well. Such a shame. To be fair to him though, as he gets away from Borja Iglesias there. Granted his uh, his goal scoring has taken a step back, but his goal stopping has improved. Defensively have been a lot better this year. No matter what back three I'm using. It's Pino. Oh, hits the post. Gashi, I think, got a touch on it. And that'll do it for the half. Still tied at 0 0. Man, a win for either team could, I wouldn't say all but lock up top four, but definitely put them in the driving seat. Big second half to come here. Well, our winning run might be ended after three, but the undefeated stretch continues. Four straight clean sheets, two, and a point and a clean sheet against a team above us in the table, in my opinion, is never too bad of a result. I'll take that. The only problem is Juve won big into Milan, beat Salernitana, so they've now gone eight clear of us. I really don't think we're going to stay in the title race, so I'm not thinking about that at all. I've put that to the back of my mind completely, but with Juve now cutting the gap to seven with nine to go, destiny's still in our own hands, but I say this all the time, man. In top-level football, all it takes is two or three bad results in a row, and suddenly you've lost your place. So following game, Sampdoria at home. Let's return to winning ways here for Zudanese. Hustling, can't win it back. Uh, Benedetti through the gap. Oh, lovely through ball. And oh, what a save, Gashi. What a brilliant, brilliant save, man. Four straight clean sheets. He wants a fifth successive one. Excellent stop there now. Profundi. Kawame just couldn't get away. Still won it. Uh, still 0 0. Festi steps in field. Profundi says, Off you go, Christian. Off you go. He scored a hat trick in the reverse fixture. That's why I've started him today. 
And I love saying this, if you've done something before, you can do it again. Christian got a match ball in the away fixture against Sampdoria. That's why I gave him the nod this afternoon ahead of Lorenzo. Decision pays off 27 minutes in. Careful, careful, careful. Come on, don't go too down. Don't go too down. Sampdoria, look for that leveller. Ball works in. Yes, Jacko, well in. And like I said, man, defensively, he's, he's picked it up from last year. Maybe his goal scoring has taken a step back, but his primary function is to defend, and he's definitely got better in that aspect. <laughs> As I was chasing shadows with him and Sampdoria find a leveller. Oh, I should have bit my tongue. Yeah, it's true in sport and football in particular. You know, losses are always going to be losses, wins are always going to be wins, but draws are subjective. How often do I say that? A draw against Atalanta, good result. A draw at home to Sampdoria, not a good result. 22 to go, Emil Ordero, to be fair, has made some great saves out there. We still find ourselves tied until we don't. Welcome back, the cheat code. L1, R1, L2, R2, up, down, up, down. Jacka puts us in front. Well, a clean sheet streak might be over, but... We return to winning ways and extend the unbeaten run to once again having to grind out a one goal victory. But wins are wins and we're still in the top four. Man, oh man, oh man, the, the nerves are real, man. Seriously, it's ours to throw in, that's the thing. I wouldn't mind if we were the underdogs and the rank outsiders, but it's ours to bottle from here, man. If we don't make it, it's on us. And just before the title clash against Inter. <laughs> Which, I mean, technically it is. We're only six points behind them. Uh, we got our final scouting updates. I know we're not. We've got the penultimate scouting updates of the mission. Let's see what we got. Oh, to be fair, Italy's, re Italy's really starting to kick on now. They've, they've left it late, but the gems are now starting to appear. Um... Yeah, I mean, Fiore's potential is sublime. It's just the overall isn't the best to start with. And at this point now, three seasons in, we kind of do need to take the overall into a bit more consideration. Um, I'm just quite keen on this guy because of the fact he's six foot six. And if he comes out of CM based on those stats there, then he could have an overall spike converting to CB. It just depends on where he is. I will give him a scholarship. We'll uh, continue the scouting on the rest of the players for now. And from Romania, I think we're probably just going to end up with the one from this mission. Uh, Octavian Marine, to be fair, could be quite good. But again, the overalls really low. But then again, you've got to look at that, those stats there. He's not a striker. He's coming out as a striker. But he's he's got far better defensive and physical stats. And whilst Grant at 5 for 6, I'm not going to chuck him in at centre-half. Um, he could probably be turned into a left-back. So, I, I, do you know what? I'm going to give him a scholarship and see how he looks. Oh, Joxie boy. You're getting soft, mate. You get, you're getting soft. You've changed, mate. You've gone for a creme de la creme. Got to be the absolute best team. Oh, give him scholarship see how he looks oh doxy giving out scholarships like lucky bags come on son this isn't you oh dear i just i oh what's happened we got from one player to seven in about two weeks oh dear but um yeah that, that's the thing that that is the one thing i will say though when you do look at players oh he does start cb when you look at certain players and you think why is the overall so low but the stats aren't bad it's because they're in the wrong position in what world is this the striker this is dj dennis jansen 2.0 for those who didn't watch my uh, cologne career mode one of our best account no he was the best academy prospect came out of striker even though he's clearly a cb and turned into one of the best center halves in the world hey you never know octavian marine might be the next DJ. Right, yeah, following game, insert Milan, heading into this one in Udine. Six-point gap at the top, eight games to go. But most crucially, seven-point gap between us and Juve. I am far more focused on that gap between us and the old lady than I am on Inter Milan. If we win, we'll cut it to three on the league leaders, but I'm not thinking about it too much. I will take a point in this game against right now the side odds on to win the championship. Most importantly, though, got to keep the unfeated stretch going. Forza Udinese. Nervy style, very nervy. Benjamin Sesco. Oh, brilliant touch, but Gashi is there with a save that we kept in play by Querfeld. Oh, oh, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, to be fair, it's led to a turnover here, which... Oh, giving it away. Oh, dear, this is nervy. Very nervy start here. So much at stake for both teams. Neither side can afford to lose this one today. That's why in games like this, where 
clear cut chance or a premium and it's a very cagey affair. If you get a good one, you gotta make sure you take it because you probably won't get another. Still deadlocked here and it's it's one of those games stick or twist, you know? I mention this sometimes, stick stick or twist. Do you, do you be brave and go for a goal or do you just try and see out a point and a clean sheet against a, well, probably right now the best team in the country? Querfeld dispossessed by Joel Linton. There's Martinez. Oh, gosh, he just about gets it over the crossbar there from basically on his goal line. Still tied at 0-0. I think just see out a point and a clean sheet, man. If, anyone, if anyone's going to win this, you put it on Inter. I think just pro, probably chuck on another defensive piece and try and grind out a 0-0 here. Luca, lovely ball through for Festi to run onto, though. That's going to kept in play. Festi. Gashi. Lorenzo Luca. What did I just say? If you get a good chance, you got to take it because you probably won't get any more. Lorenzo Luca fell to the right man, just adrenaline. Had more time than I realised. Took it on early. Easy save for the Swiss shot stopper. And now here come into Lautaro Martinez. On the turn, Fernandez. Sesco! From jubilation to despair, could have gone in front, go a goal behind, Inter take the lead. Well, it's the final 15 minutes now, and Inter Milan looking to wrap this up. Bruno Fernandez with the free kick. Oh, clips the top of the crossbar. To, to be fair, I mean, I, I had that one chance through Luca, but really, I mean, you know, I say this all the time. I never present my highlights package unfairly or, uh, or biased. If I've, if I've not played well, you'll see it. If one team's been better, you'll see it. And Inter have been the better team out there. Got one chance. And um, really, the fact we were still tied at 0-0 heading into that moment there, just, just kind of shows you how poor Inter's finishing had been. They've been the better team, though, and they're going to deserve this win. Fernandez clips it in, and yeah, it, it, it's been their game. It just took them a long time to get in front. A deserved lead, a deserved win, and that is going to do it. Our unbeaten run coming to an end by the side that are probably going to win the championship. There is no shame in that, but what it has to us is that any slim possibility of being a title race is now over. No doubt about it. We're out of the title race, and now it's all about trying to cling on the fourth. It's certainly not going to get any easier either. Next up, AC Milan away at the San Siro. Now the closest threat to Inter. And they need to win this game in hand to cut the gap on their great rivals to two. With Juve now cutting the gap to four, we need to win to keep the old lady at bay. Because they're sure to beat Sassuolo at home. Man, oh man, it is getting tight right now in the race for that fourth and final Champions League spot. AC Milan away once again. So much riding on this game for both teams. Huge pressure game and after just one win in three we need someone special to put out here at the San Siro. Let's see if we can go do it for Zerudinezzo. To be fair the only good thing about this is we're facing all the oh, all the three teams above us basically in succession outside of the Sampdoria game which broke the run up. First it was Atalanta then Inter and now AC Milan. So all the three teams above us coming one by one. That, that's a good thing because it means that granted we're probably not going to win any of the games but let's say hypothetically we're lucky to get a point here or there. We'll take it. A bonus. Oh, great finish. And then we'll add the bankers. And if we win all the bankers we will make it because of the gap. So we've just got to get through this run of fixtures. Toughest run of fixtures between now and the end of the season. Get through it. If we're lucky, pick up a point. Pick up a win. That would be massive. But just get through it. And then make sure we win the games where we are firm favourites. Luke up to Festi. Nice little give and go between the pair. And oh, Festi. Festi. Yes! Touch. Oh, volley. Finish. Lorenzo with the leveller. Into the final two minutes of normal time. And just trying to see out a point. And some might say it's defensive. I say I've always been a fan of Gareth Southgate. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Because sure, it's only one win in four, but you've got to look at the teams we faced in this run. 
And considering the fact that we only lost one of the three against the teams that are above us right now, I'll take the point and call it a good result, especially away at the San Siro. Walking down that tunnel, pleased to get it. Returning to Udine with Destiny still in our hands to finish in the top four. I'll take that. Hey, listen, you can call it negative if you want, but England are in the Euro semi-finals. Uh, you can call that negative if you want, not going for a winner. But hey, Udinese is still in the top four. Six games to go, two-point gap. And because of their head head-to-head record again, if we win five of the remaining six and draw the other, we, we've locked it up. It's ours to throw away from here. And we're playing next as well before Juve hosts Lazio. So a winner against Sassuolo will see us extending out to five with five to play. I might have taken a draw there at the San Siro. I, I weren't here away against Sassuolo. We need to win this one here to keep Juventus at bay before they host Lazio tomorrow afternoon. Big clash here to try and return to winning ways off. Just one in four and none in our last two. Forza Udinese. Congratulations for the guy to Oscar Dorley. We'll come into the middle here. Ah, tough start to the game. My passing's going astray. The nerves starting to affect me a bit. Haven't been at my best here. And again, we can afford we can afford a draw in the final running if we win the others. What we can't afford is a loss. Sassuolo take the lead. Andrew Rapino Monti opens the score, and this is unacceptable. Yeah, well done, Christensen. If we get one chance for the break here, Pratty through to Festi. Final chance of the half. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Give and go. Someone get on the middle. Luca! Oh, hits the post. Prods it goal bound. Clips the outside of the woodwork. 45 minutes to play though. Just, just got to stay positive. Plenty of time to turn this round here. Still half an hour to go, but I cannot get the ball off Sassuolo. They've dominated possession in the second half, and I, I can't get it off them. I literally cannot get the ball back. Mister, can I please have my ball back? Honestly, at the moment, it's just literally... Yes! Right, come on. 20 minutes to go. I don't want to draw. I need to win this. Come on. Totally different scenario to the game at the San Siro. And we were just trying to see out the point here. Trying to flip this script and win it. Udinese not trying to cling on, but push on for a winner. Pufundi. Kwame off the bench to win it. Christian Kwame might be here just for this season, but he might leave a hero. Massive, massive goal. Six on the clock. Udinese come from behind to surely win it in Sassuolo. What a moment for the Ivorian. And we discussed this a couple of episodes ago. But don't look at goals per game. Look at goals per minute. For Kwame, it's not that bad. Yes. <sighs> Off the bench to bail me out when Lorenzo couldn't notch one up. Christian Kwame with a huge late winner. Udinese, put the pressure on Juve and go five clear. Right, then over to you, Lazio. Over to you tomorrow against Juventus. If they can hold them, oh man, it is hours to throw away with five to play. So let's do it. One advance in the calendar. Here we go. Yes, five clear. <sighs> yes. Seven behind Inter, forget it. Do not care one bit. Let, let, let's do one more. I was going to do two more today, but let's, let's do one more. Because we've got Bologna at home, and again, we play a day before. Do we? Are we before Juve again? Oh, no, they're before us. Oh, they're before us. They're before us. They've got Milan away at the San Siro. So actually, let's get through to it. AC Milan, please. I'll love you forever. No, Juve back to... Okay, Juve back to winning ways at the San Siro. But it's okay, because we've got a game in hand with two clear, and it still has to throw away. Let's do, let's do one more. We'll end on this. We'll save the final four for the next episode. <sighs> Bologna at home. Two-point gap. Win it. We extend it to five. Four to play. It means we win three of the final four. We will be in the Champions League next year. Ten behind Inter. I don't care one bit. Win this game, and Destiny's in our own hands with four to play. Five to go. This match day 34. Bologna at home. Four to Indonesia. Come on. So just trying to do the maths in my head, which is, you know, never a good idea for me to do. <laughs> um, again, five point gap if we win uh, this game in hand. And uh, with four to go, again, because of the head-to-head -head record being better than Juve's, 
Oh, Profundi, what a goal. It's, uh, it's, it's ours to bottle. It really is. I mean, we could, we could win two, draw one, and I think we still make it, if, even if Juve win all four, I think. Is that right? I think. Um, but for sure, free, free, win, free wins guarantees it anyway. Free wins guarantees it anyway out of four games, which really with the games we've got, and, and to be fair, a couple of tough games, you still got Rome, we still got Napoli, but we should be able to get three wins, I'd say, in the remaining four. So win this, put us in the best possible position, and extend it back to five. That's how we've got to close today's episode out, man. Eyes on the prize. Big three points here in Udina. Let's get it. Easy, 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 easy. Oh, what a save, Gashi! Gashi, what a save! <sighs> the nerves are unreal. Tipped onto the post. And we still remain leading, but it's it's coming. That leveler is coming. Bologna with the equaliser, but plenty of time to still win this. And again, it's just it's just situation specific because at the start of the season we weren't thinking about top four. We weren't thinking about hold on. Off the post! We weren't thinking about the Champions League. We were thinking about Conference League. And if we if we were in, if we're this way, if the roles were reversed and we were in Juve's place, we wouldn't be feeling nervous. But it's the fact that it's hours to throw away. That's what's making it nervy. The Luca fires in the second for us. Udinese back in front. Easy, easy. Don't overcommit. Yes, Pratu. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, Gashi, wonderful footwork. Better through ball. Get in! 30 minutes to play. Udinese surely going five clear. Sorry, it's four games to play, not three games to play. But even so, destiny in our own hands. Heading into the final four. A five-point gap on the old lady, and again, because of the head-to-head -head record, two wins and a draw, seven points. We'll see Udinese qualify for the Champions League. There's no doubt about it. If we fail to do it now, it's going to be an absolutely epic bottle job. But that'll do it for today's episode of the Serie A career mode, guys. Big thank you for watching. We really hope you have enjoyed. If you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And we will return with the season finale, the final four games, where, again, seven points sees us make the Champions League for next season. It's ours to bottle from here. Have a great day. Much love. And I'll see you for the finale very soon. Forza Udinese.